This video will be available ad-free in an audio podcast form on Locals.com for monthly subscribers. YouTube AdSense is unreliable at best, and Locals will help mitigate that risk for the channel. There are also other incentives and bonuses, so if you have any interest at all, there is a link down below in the description. All right, today I'll be branching away from the topic of video games, something I do from time to time here and there, because there is another issue I want to discuss that I believe is important enough and valuable enough to justify that choice. The topic is PETA, also known as the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, and the reason is because, quite frankly, I hate these people. Now, right off the bat, some of you are going to be alarmed because hating an organization that purports to be centered on ethical treatment of animals must mean that I am advocating for unethical treatment of animals, but that's not actually the case. The reality is, PETA has crossed the Rubicon and become a deranged activist collective that does more harm per year to widespread and beloved animal populations than most people would ever even believe. Today, I want to discuss why PETA is a horribly manipulative, psychopathic operation which, at the very least, must be exposed to the public for what it truly is. A propaganda-ridden cult of fanaticism that verifiably inflicts more harm than good while still, somehow, operating in the minds of many as a righteous advocate for the life and liberty of animals, which could not be further from the truth. To start with, I want to ease into the topic. There are some really heavy and extreme examples of their behavior, which I'll cover later on, so brace yourself. But to begin with, let's take something provable, simple, and definitive. Cats are a beloved domesticated animal for millions, probably tens, even hundreds of millions of households. Cats have taken over the internet, they've become a global phenomenon, and their popularity dates back thousands of years to literal god worship in ancient civilizations. PETA, advocating some sort of sickly dogmatic version of animal protection, has officially stated through an organizational spokesperson that they believe all cats, and dogs for that matter, in addition to all humans, should be vegan. A vegan diet is defined by its exclusion of all meat and animal products, so on a surface level the idea of ethical animal treatment probably kind of makes sense. However, if you go even one step further, it absolutely doesn't. Domestic house cats are obligatory carnivores. What this means is that they simply do not have a digestive system for plant-based food. They are not omnivores or herbivores. They are, again, obligatory carnivores. This is fairly obvious when we remember that despite their smaller size, they were domesticated from wild predator cats many thousands of years ago. And funnily enough, science has begun to show that certain cats actually domesticated themselves, having found an easily beneficial existence alongside humans, which will tear apart another aspect aspect of PETA's delusional fanaticism, but for right now, let's remain focused on diet. Cats must eat meat. They simply do not have a digestive tract that supports plant products, and forcing a cat to be vegan is effectively cruel and unusual punishment. PETA openly advocated at an officially endorsed level for verifiable animal cruelty under the guise of moral and ethical superiority. Whether or not you believe that is intentional or negligent is up to you, but if it is indeed simply a lack of information, it is a dangerous and harmful level of ineptitude, which should immediately prove that this organization is an absolute embarrassment. But let's continue. To this very day, PETA maintains that there is a beneficial link between milk-free diets and autistic behavior in children. They cite a particular study on their website composed of just 20 children, a sample size so small it is totally unknown whether or not the effects are legitimate or a function of other biological factors. But even worse, almost all data I could find in the aftermath of that study suggests no link at all between casein-free, gluten-free, or other product-free diets and autism spectrum disorder behavior. The exception is sugar. Pump them full of sugar and artificial sweeteners and they freak out, but that's a completely obvious and unrelated topic to milk. Well, PETA thinks that this single 20-child study justifies this right here, a fear-mongering, scientifically incorrect advertisement campaign to manipulate parents and alarm children. This was done to traumatize and scare young parents into conforming to their fanatical belief system, and it truly is just the beginning. PETA used to create horrific comic book illustrations aimed directly at children, with the catchphrases, your daddy kills animals, or your mommy kills animals. These were meant to create a rift between children and their parents and weaponize the youth against the parents because their mother might wear a coat with fur on it. The tactics here are already disgusting, but how about going 42 steps further? On the official PETA website, we can read their stance on violence. PETA maintains a creed of nonviolence and does not advocate actions in which anyone, human or non-human, is injured. We are a legal activist organization that works to educate the public about the horrors of cruelty to animals through peaceful, nonviolent means. No one has ever been killed through animal rights activity in the United States. However, Bruce Friedrich, the former vice president of PETA for 15 years, is quoted in 2001 as having said the following to Sierra Magazine. 
quote, if we really believe that animals have the same right to be free from pain and suffering at our hands, then of course we're going to be, as a movement, blowing things up and smashing windows. I think it's a great way to bring about animal liberation. I think it would be great if all the fast food outlets, slaughterhouses, these laboratories, and the banks that fund them exploded tomorrow. I think it's perfectly appropriate for people to take bricks and toss them through the windows. Hallelujah to the people who are willing to do it. End quote. This should very quickly and categorically demonstrate that PETA will say one thing, but what they want is completely different. In 2013, PETA widely promoted a game encouraging people to play because you can punch scientists in the face. But when confronted about their vitriol, the spokesperson for the organization on social media tried to claim that this particular stance is acceptable and not an open call for violence because of what these scientists do for their career and the harm that they sometimes cause to animals. But a different game saying, for instance, you get to punch punch teachers in the face would be bad because their thinly veiled logic deems it unacceptable to promote violence against that particular group. It doesn't make any sense. It's actually a blatant contradiction, but the reality is PETA absolutely does promote and desire violence, once again leading to blatant lies on their website and within their mission statement philosophy so long as it's violence against the people they disagree with. But now we get to the heavier topics. PETA operates a number of animal adoption shelters, but in reality that could not be further from the truth. While legally speaking, PETA operates adoption shelters, their actual tactics are much more sinister. One particularly extreme example comes from Virginia, where the private animal shelter euthanization rate is around 9 to 10% annually statewide. For PETA, though, the rate at which they will euthanize cats and dogs is upwards of 70%, amounting to thousands of pets per year. This also makes little sense when compared to the funding resources at PETA's disposal. Turns out, in 2015, PETA received over $42 million in donations, but that most of the money was spent on bailing out or legally defending criminals who were arrested in the process of violating the law to push PETA's zealotry. Very little of the money went to pet care, shelter expansion, or new facilities to ethically house and rescue stray animals. But in the facilities they do have, compared to even state-run shelters, which have significantly less less money to work with, they were euthanizing the animals at a rate three to four times higher. To really hammer this home, PETA spends less than 1% of its annual budget actually helping animals. They operate more as a fanatical harassment movement than anything else, and they even utilize front groups and fake committees to trick the press and spread their dogma further. The Physicians Community for Responsible Medicine, PCRM, is actually just an extension of PETA, using hyperbolic statements like, school lunches are weapons of mass destruction because they contain meat and dairy in some districts. This is just one of the organizations that they use to prop up false scientific claims of dairy product harm. Remember the Got Autism board? Yeah, they did one for cancer as well. The advertising campaign consumed money that could have saved animal lives in their own shelters, but they were too busy spreading propaganda. Now we get to the really heavy stuff. The ALF and the ELF, that is the Animal Liberation Front and the Earth Liberation Front, are recognized by the FBI as legitimate domestic terror threats. Their activities include arson, firebombing businesses, and even teaching young activists how to craft similar munitions to use against those that they disagree with. And PETA has donated thousands of dollars to these groups, and also directly to the individuals of these groups who will burn down private property. And, in more extreme cases, PETA gave $7,500 to Franz Stephanie Trutt, who pled guilty to attempted murder of a medical research executive. There is so much more. Previous PETA interns and leadership who moved on to other organizations and were convicted of violent crimes, further payments to groups that commit acts of terror around the world, and all of it comes back to the central premise of PETA being simply a nonviolent ethical animal treatment advocacy group, something that could not be further from the truth. One more and the final example for today. A number of years ago, once again in Virginia, PETA did something unforgivable. Not to say that any of the previous points were forgivable, but this is particularly sinister. During an effort to capture stray dogs and cats in and around a farm who had been negatively impacting the farmer's livestock, these stray animals were not to be captured and released or captured and cared for. They would be captured and killed. But during this effort, PETA employees coaxed the dog of a trailer owner in a park next door off of his property so it could be snatched as a stray and within two hours had taken it to their facility to be put down. 
The case was dropped after it was determined that there was insufficient evidence of intentional wrongdoing, since intent is an exceptionally high bar to clear anyways in our justice system. But when you combine the entirety of what PETA is with these suspect scenarios, things take on a different atmosphere. The reality is, in that trailer park, a large number of pets went missing that day. And if not for a security camera video, it might never have been known what truly happened as all of these pets, including four-month-old kittens, a six-month-old puppy, and other dogs as well, were put down by PETA within hours of being abducted from their homes. I hate these people. I hate them with the same passion that they hate others who lovingly care for their animals while doing no harm and giving them a wonderful home. PETA is not an advocacy group or an activist collective intent on ethical treatment. They are a collection of criminals. They fund radical groups who execute violent atrocities. They spread propaganda and hide behind false medical boards to fearmonger and incite panic. They spend all of their money, or almost all of their money, tens of millions of dollars that is, on bail and legal defense for criminals and obnoxious protesters instead of caring for the animals that they take in. And they euthanize in their shelters at nearly 10 times the necessary rate. PETA deserves no support, no consideration, and no financial benefits. Their movement is a dogmatic, psychopathic endeavor to sever a connection between humans and animals that has existed since the dawn of time, and their efforts to do so are predicated on harming everyone involved and everyone around them. Do not support this group. Understand what they truly are and realize that simply naming yourself as an ethical defender of rights does not by itself mean anything. I can call myself Upper Echelon, CMEP, Champion of Moral and Ethical Perfection, but that doesn't make it true. PETA hides behind their name, and it's our job not to fall for it. But that's it. If you want to support, there are links down below, merch, locals, other social media, as well as another gaming YouTuber to check out, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.